Welcome back. Club members, it's the May edition, and this month we're looking at yeast strains. Mm. Oh, you sexy yeast, it you call it. It doesn't sound sexy, but it is sexy, and yeast is so important in winemaking, Kiri. You know this. They're the real winemakers. They're the winemakers, and when we're talking about wine, we can't take grapes into wine without yeast, and in champagne, we ferment twice, so yeast is super important. Mm. But we're looking at two different types of yeast. That's right. So, just to summarise, we're going to basically get into industrial, which is your sort of your quick package yeast that most people use, 99% of the winemaking world, versus a complete natural yeast selection coming from the vineyards. Now, Very this is this is a, a revolution. This yeah. is a whole new world of champagne we've got in front of us. So we're going to dive straight into that. thrilled about both champagnes and both producers that are coming out this month we hunted high and low for these particular wines we had the topic in our minds for a while but we, we were very patient to find them we actually got this one in specifically didn't we yeah, we did absolutely it's just for you we have de or effie is the first wine mm -hmm. jerome de or is an amazing winemaker took over his vineyard in 1996 14 hectares in the valley d'alemane a very unique winemaking style but perhaps the yeast mm -hmm. is um, is most particular. Let's talk through why he's particular. Okay, let's get right into it, Kyla. <laughs> so why I love uh, uh, Jerome and what he's been doing, he is um, a man of detail. I'm a man of detail, I love that stuff. He went into these vineyards, he started to work vineyard by vineyard and actually selecting different yeast strains and collaborating with a lab. That occur naturally in the vineyard. That occur naturally on the, on, in the lab, uh, sorry, in the vineyard, but with on the pedestal, okay? So if you're looking at the stalk of the grape, that's where the yeasts live. So over years, he gathered them and cultivated them in the lab to make something that was very specific just to that vineyard. So now, now he's cultivated this yeast? Think how long that takes yeah. and how much money you'd have to spend to get it there. So that's, that's a a big commitment as opposed to just buying an industrial yeast it's Correct. all manufactured for him and this is the first cuvee that's using this yeast the first trial and then we'll see that roll out through his other cuvees but yeah. this one's very special exactly much like you do a sourdough and you have your own cultured mm. yeast you know at home that type of thing yeah Okay, so we have the Brutney Tour coming to you from the Dor House. So obviously zero sugar, no dosage, nowhere to hide. We've got Pinot Meunier, which is really the predominance of the Valley de la Marne and the house. Yep, but absolutely. But we a hint of Chardonnay and Pinot Noir because it's a Solera system. That's it. It's coming back from 1986 as a Solera, which is a blend of reserve wines, which, which contains Pinot Noir, Pinot Meunier and Chardonnay. A little bit of Chardonnay, yeah. a little bit of Pinot Noir that's been blended into the mix. So really zippy acidity, mm. but you've got um, this beautiful apple and a little bit of tartan and some spice, um, but this really saline, lean, zippy minerality and loads of length. I love it. I love it. Spiced, spiced apple sort of cake uh, were, were the first things that came, came for me. Um, and, and good line of acid as well for Meunier. Meunier tends to be quite fruit forward mm. and then sort of not much else, but this has it. So really, really loving that. Three years in the cellar, great champagne. Lastly, Dior tried this wine when he made it with an industrial versus his native yeah, yeast. It couldn't have been more different. And on that day when he tried the wine, he's decided that all of his wines going forward after the Brut Nature, after this wine, were gonna be made with the same yeast strain. That's gonna be exciting. That's awesome. So for the connoisseurs this month, we're following up with another amazing producer by the name of Chaton Taillé, or Alexandre Chaton, who is heading up the house at the moment. Super, super excited oh, to have him in such the an fold. Awesome wine. Uh, so lovely. I mean, th there's mostly Meunier in the Dior. This is 100% Pinot Noir. It's from the 2012 vintage. All the awesome uh, all the stats will be laid out in the email for you, so you can read all the information. What what we really want to get across is that. Like the or he uses lots of different plots, and this is a single vineyard plot and a single vintage. Yeah, so he's got eight distinct plots amongst his hectares. Um, Le Cura or Chateau Cura is one of those particular plots. It's on the southern star, southern slopes of the uh, of the Montagne de Rams. It's got a lot of ripeness. Yeah, it's five years in the cellar, and he actually ferments it in a clay egg. So you get this continuous movement of the wine and a lot more contact with the yeast. So you have this suppleness, this roundness, this richness. This is a 
banging champagne. Can mm. I say that? Banging. 2012, tiny quantities, 3,600 bottles made. We have every last bottle in Australia, connoisseurs, and they're coming to you. This is an awesome champagne. Another amazing example of a winemaker who's so pure, who really expresses the, the sense of terroir. He says that even the varietal of the grape doesn't matter to him. It's, it's really important. about a sense of yeah. extraction and place coming from the vineyard. And that's why he uses indigenous yeast. Yep. He, he is true to form Alexander Chaton. Absolutely. And um, he also uses a concrete egg, which may mean nothing to you, but uh, from a winemaking perspective, it adds a neutrality to the wine. And what, what I mean by that is it doesn't actually add any flavor or profile. It does soften it slightly, of the interaction of oxygen Sunshine but in it's glass, really really Kiri. it is warm it's so good and generosity it's so good it's gorgeous this is an amazing champagne so the wine is completely different to the previous wine you know five mm. years in the cellar or pinot noir yep 4.5 grams yep um really voluptuous for me when i put my nose in there's a warmth it's like sunshine in a glass Plush. It's plush. We yeah, both it's noted this kind of herbaceous note. It was a, it's like fennel seeds. Yeah, fe fennel seed and that herbal vibe certainly came through both wines. In fact, a little bit more in the Cuar Chateau. And you got to remember that this style is definitely more about earth. It's more about the soil. And uh, you can really see that in, in, in the glass. The richness. Yeah, I love it. So looking at both wines, we can see so much expression coming from them. Uh, a lot of great aromatic profile. The longer you leave them in the glass, the more that they will give you. Um, there's a clear line that natural yeasts work in both primary and secondary prise de mousse. It doesn't take away from the bigger houses, but we're certainly starting to see some real personality in these wines. Well, you know, there's the, the pros and cons, okay? So industrial yeast is consistency. You know that the prise de mousse is going to take. Guaranteed. There's no yeah. faults. There's yeah. no room for error. Perfecting a natural yeast is not easy, but they've done it in this case. Two amazing examples. Please enjoy the champagnes that are coming out this month. They're yes. rare, they're interesting, and they are both sensational. We will see you next month.